so when we finally made it up to our, our first room of the night was at the top of the stairs. And I don't remember the name of the room, but it's like, as soon as you go up the stairs, it was one of the suites and it was a big, huge room. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And like we set up shop, Wendy and I had like a, you know, the bed is covered in equipment. <laughs> we, you know, put donned all black and we're about to get started. And uh, we do like a ritual to kind of open up to the spirits just to basically say, Hey, we're here and we don't mean any harm. We're just like, you know, trying to um, open up communication. We want to find out more about you. And we had this weird, like animal noise come across like right away. And I thought, that was really bizarre. So I, I played back the, the digital recorder. I thought maybe it was something on the digital recorder. It wasn't there, but Wendy was filming it with her camera. She had it like set up on a tripod and the camera caught the noise. Yeah. So it was just a weird, like maybe something was there, but I don't know why it came through in a weird animal noise. We weren't, you know, hi kitty kitty or hi puppy doll, <laughs> you know, no. it was just a strange thing that happened right away. Mm-hmm. And uh, I would like to say that that's what set off the night, but no, I have to rewind and go right back to the Bella Fontaine because that's what set it off for me, just going through the motions. And that's what I'm trying to do with the story here is tell you that if you go do it the same way we did it, I feel like it really <laughs> just opened up the doorway for us. <laughs> so we met um, this group of girls that were up on the top floor, right? They were partying. They were having a birthday celebration. It was a good time for them. They invited us up. They were super into the paranormal. They go to the limp all the time, right? And uh, because they were so friendly with us, they showed us around some of their rooms that we didn't get to see, you know? So that was super cool. They're like, hey, yeah, check out this room. One of the rooms turned out to be the room that we got the second night. Yeah. Um, so, and that room had a really nice bathroom and <laughs> so nice but so just kind of mingling with the people there they were all really good uh they seemed to be really good people it was then when we went down to investigate when things sort of started changing now i know that these girls were were partying they were not like getting super wasted or anything but they were having a few drinks they offered mm -hmm. us some drinks and i don't remember us even having anything we were just like no 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 thank no, you that was back in the day when we were very strict about not drinking on investigations, on investigations. which we right. really don't do even now, but I mean, there has been times at the end of the night that we found if we have like a glass of wine when we're trying yeah. to go to sleep, that yeah, that's right. been helpful because there's been times where we just can't turn it off. So, yeah. but we don't just yeah. carry our drinks around with us with our <laughs> audio recorders. Well, let, let me set down my beer. <laughs> Spirits, <laughs> are you here with us? Yeah. So, we ended up down on the main floor again, um, and the group of girls were down there with us, and they, you could still tell, like, they were, they were buzzing, you know, that they had had a lot of booze in them, and they were still looking for a good time, and some of them were like, oh, yeah, you get, the ghost hunter girls are here, let's hang out with them, and we were down in, like, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the dining room area and we're having just some sort of energy come through because the meters are going off. And then all of a sudden one of their group of girls got totally freaked out and she's like, I'm out of here. And I don't even know what happened to her. Like why she got so scared. Yeah. She never said uh, her never friends said. never told us or anything. She just had her, like everybody else is involved in something. And she went upstairs, packed her bags, came she back did. downstairs and tried to sneak out the door. And they and were like, was... where are you going? You can't even leave out that door. So what are you doing? And she's like, I have to go. I have to go. And she just wouldn't talk to them and then left. Yeah. She left out the front door. Um, our uh, host, for the evening um he basically said we're locking up the front door you can't leave out this way you can go out one of the back doors if you need to leave but you know this is the door that needs to stay locked i think his name was christopher no it was matthew matthew thank you yeah. i think i said that the last time we talked about this <laughs> you just really it's wanted to be a christopher <laughs> it's christopher i promise but yes, she flips out, she leaves, and during this whole time, this burst of energy, when our meters are going off and our cameras are acting weird, one of the girls that I was in the living room or the dining room with, she's holding a, um, a K2, and I'm holding the ghost meter just to see that we're getting, um, you know, the same kind of reading. Mm -hmm. You know, why is one going off? Um, 
well, you want to see if Them one is going go off. off. Right, exactly. Yeah. And they were. They were both going off. And it's really bizarre because uh, the ghost meter, I've always kind of felt, was just sort of more like a toy. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you know, it's like it's junk. I don't know if this thing actually works. It's going off. The K2 is going off. We all know the K2 is ultra sensitive. Mm-hmm. So what is happening here? And then at that exact moment, my finger gets scratched. Like it yeah. starts burning. And I'm like, what the hell? And I, you know, I go to put it in my mouth. And then I'm like, wait, how did that even happen? I didn't cut myself. Nobody's touching me. Yeah. Just randomly holding something. How do you get a scratch on your hand? Right. Exactly. And it was the hand that I was with the meter with mm-hmm. too. So I still didn't feel like it was malevolent. If anything, it was sort of like, oops, oh, damn it, I scratched her. You know, because <laughs> everything there, the energy, again, it just felt, it felt good to me. It felt like something was trying to get our attention, but it never felt like, oh, I got scratched. It's a demon. You know, it's evil. I never, I never felt like that at all, but I was, I was definitely taken, um, uh, I was caught off guard, I guess I should say. I didn't expect that to happen. Yeah. Yeah. 